Welcome back to the Blue Cottage. This is Matt Riley. And today we were doing a an old Appalachian murder ballad. Okay, very popular back in uh, 1800s, uh, beginning of the 1900s. Um, that one was called Wild Bill Jones, obviously. It's an murder, American murder ballad. Believe it or not, there's only two chords in that song. Two chord changes. It just goes from G to D. Or whatever key you want to do it in. It's the one and the five chord. Um, this is a really interesting song of a very interesting subgenre. The the um, you know the American traditional music is so varied in its context. Um, you have your spirituals, you have your love songs, you have your hearth and home family songs, and you have your murder ballads and ghost story songs. And and we have to remember when we're talking about these this in this context that this was a primary form of entertainment for the family, the people in the home. You know, um, there were no computers, no TVs, none of that, as I've said countless times before in my videos. Um, they, a family would consider themselves lucky in the Appalachian Mountains if they had a Bible in the house, you know, to read from. Um, and, you know, but their culture is so strong and beautiful um, and, and typically American. Um, so we'll get back to the, the history of the song. The earliest known recording of this song was done in 1925 by two women, uh, fiddler Eva Davis and banjo player Samantha Bumgardner. Um, now this is a very, very famous song. Alison Krauss and Union Station have done it, but earlier uh, recordings by famous people include Doc Boggs, the Stanley Brothers, uh, Doc Watson, um, to name a few among a long line of people that have recorded this song. Um, <clears throat> this song was collected in the Appalachian Mountains in 1916. So remember we had talked about that in another video that a lot of song collectors went actually into the mountains and collected these songs so they would not be so they would not pass from this earth they're important you know so um this song was collected by two english folklore cecil sharp and maud Car maud carpellis okay in 1916. so they made um three collecting those two are worth mentioning like uh, we talked about Samuel P. Bayard in one of our um, in one of our videos, um, Cecil Sharp and Maud, Car Maud Carpellis made three trips uh, across the Atlantic Ocean between 1916 and 1918. So think about that time period too, the height of World War One, World War One, um, U-boat warfare was going on, ships were being sunk left and right. And um, Cecil Sharp and Maud, Car Maud Carpellis. Why can't I say Maud Carpellis without putting an R in the more? Maud, I don't know. But um, they traveled back and forth three times in those two years uh, to collect these trips, uh, to, to collect these songs in uh, North Carolina, Virginia, West Virginia, Tennessee, and Kentucky. And Maud took down the words and Cecil wrote out the notes. But uh, together, they collected over 1,600 tunes, right? And uh, two volumes were published, I think, in 1932. Um, but think of this is back in the day where you were walking over, um, you know, you, were, you had to go by mule or you had to go by horse or you had to go by wagon or you had to go by foot, you know? There were no um, paved roads right outside your house, especially through the Appalachian Mountains. So this was a tremendous feat that these people did. Um, and we are uh, in, indebted to them for maintaining this part of our culture and our heritage for the future. And I can't stress, once again, I'm gonna hit this, this nail on the head again about how important these songs were to people every day. Okay, as, as, as important as your cell phone is to you now, or your tablet, or your computer, or TV, television, you know, um, all these things that we take for granted, okay? This was so big 
you know, to have somebody in your family that could actually play songs and express, you know, these, these ideas. So, you know, really to fire your imagination during the listening of the song, you know, it's a story song, you know, and, um, a great one at that. And we'll do more of these. There's so many murder ballads in the American culture. And this is a little bit of a rarity because it's a guy, um, killing a guy for, for being, um, with his girlfriend, but there's so many others where a, a guy is killing a girl, um, for whatever reason, it's a tragic love story kind of thing. Um, very eerie, um, you know, but think of the books, thanks to the videos you watch on, on YouTube. Listen, I've seen some videos on YouTube that are like, you know, and don't ask me how they have 3 million hits, but it's, it, uh, one was just this lady yelling at people <laughs> going by, like just yelling. I, I don't even, I don't remember what the, uh, you know, she was outside and the, her whole video series is her just yelling at people going by. I don't get it, don't understand it, but that's, we have to keep this culture alive. This is the culture we need to, uh, you know, uh, expand on. Well, that's my own opinion, okay? Uh, listen, we thank you for stopping by the Blue Cottage today. It's always great hanging out here and, and playing and learning about these uh, these tunes and our and our culture from where whatever land our culture originated in it came here to America and you know I know on 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 this channel we normally focus on how it melded together in the Appalachian Mountains um you know but um it's great stuff to think about and great stuff to keep producing in the future so we thank you hope you have a good day and we'll see you next time